Well, we're continuing our coverage from Students for Liberty with none other than Nick Gillespie, editor-at-large at Reason Magazine. Nick, thank you so much for taking a couple of minutes out of what is a very busy night for you. It I really appreciate seem. it. Yeah. Now, Nick, you're very, very well known for your work, but perhaps less so in Australia than you would be over here. In yeah. a nutshell, how would you describe what you do? I, I write articles and uh, create videos and podcasts for Reason Magazine, the world's largest libertarian publication. We've been around since 1968, and our... Um, our slogan is free minds and free markets. So we look to uh, see how can you increase freedom in every area of human activity. Mm -hmm. We're uh, happy warriors against busybodies and control freaks. Mm -hmm. uh, we want, we're into technology and new mindsets and kind of new ways of living that make life more interesting and more fun and more responsive to whatever you want. Mm. So what got you into that? What was it that alerted you as the, the young man yeah. that you no doubt that were at I one point in time? Was, yeah. yeah, very long ago. <laughs> Look, uh, well, I'm not implying that. Ironically, it was Reason Magazine. Okay. Um, I, so Reason's been around since 1968. I'm 60. I've been working at Reason for 30 years, half of wow. my life. I started reading it probably when I was 15 or 16. My older brother went to college and found it in the college bookstore. Right. Started sending it home to me. And what I liked about it then, and what I still like about it, is that it would look at policy issues and kind of cultural issues, strip away moral panic, strip away bullshit, and kind of focus in on like, is this is this law, is this policy doing what it says it's going to right. do? Um, and a lot of the times it doesn't. You know, so things like regulations to make things safer end up having negative effects. You yeah. know, they crowd out innovation and they actually don't protect people. Yeah. You know, so. I started reading it and it really spoke to me. I worked as a journalist after graduating college. I went and got a PhD in English literature and as I was finishing that up, Reason had a job opening and I applied for it and got the job and then I've been there ever since. And the rest, as they say, is history. Something like that. When you come to a place like yeah. this, there's a thousand young Nick Gillespie's out yeah, there who, who, are, who are going to be I'm in that not room. not taking responsibility for that, <laughs> nor I think they're better than that. But well, well, this is the thing. We, yeah. we all have the privilege of standing on the shoulders of those who yeah. came before us. Absolutely. What do you hope to see the 20 year olds in there yeah. be able to accomplish in their lifetime? It's been a struggle yeah. for, for, for you, yeah, it's yeah, a struggle yeah. for me, where it's yeah. a slow build. What, it is, what do you see in the future? Well, you know, one of the things that I think a lot about in the, in the broad based libertarian movement is to re remember both the fact of progress but also the need for progress. Uh, okay. my, my parents, who have long passed, were born in the 20s. They were the children of immigrants in America. They grew up during the Depression. My father mm -hmm. fought in World War II. Mm -hmm. By the time they died, their lives were infinitely better than what their parents had ever imagined, what they had ever imagined. Sure. My life is so much better than theirs. My kids, I have two sons, their lives will be better than mine. Sure. But the future doesn't just happen. And one of the ways that we make sure that the future keeps getting better is by remembering the past, to remember what worked and what didn't. There's a lot of wisdom that has gotten forgotten. We should recover that. But also, there's a lot of progress. Mm -hmm. And when I hear younger people and a lot of older people now saying, you know, that the, the current economy in America is awful, that nobody can afford a job, nobody can afford a house, nobody mm -hmm. can afford mm -hmm. a car, a college education, it's just wrong. Mm -hmm. And it's spectacularly wrong. Mm -hmm. But, so we need to remember that actually things are getting better. But then we also have to think about why they are getting better and how you make them better still. Yeah. And what I hope that younger people recognize is that what is good about libertarianism is it doesn't dictate a particular future. It doesn't say, in order for America to become great, mm. this many people must die mm. in this cause, mm -hmm. or we need to all believe that you know the only thing that matters is global warming, and you know all of our money is going to be spent trying to mitigate that. Mm -hmm. um, it is that the ultimate the ultimate future is one in where you get to pursue pursue your vision. I get to pursue mine as much as possible. There are I'm not an anarchist. There are times where government has to sure. come in, but it's that and kind of figuring out. What are the technologies that we need to get to a better place? What are the um, institutions that many of the institutions that we're living in now, I think this is true in, in um, Australia as well as the US, mm. they are 50 years old, 100 years old. They were developed for a different world and they just yeah. don't work anymore, yeah. if they ever did, but definitely not now. And we're at a real juncture point where 
all of the stuff coming out of World War II, you know, and this is things like the UN and NATO mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the World Bank and the IMF, like so many international organizations have outlived whatever purpose they once served. We need to rebuild what comes next along a line where it's, you know, it, it helps individuals more than groups. Yeah. So last question before yeah. I let you go. I know you're in Thank demand. You. What specific message, you've got the chance to stand on this stage and impart a specific message at this specific time to the people gathered here. What are you going to be telling? Uh, what I'm going to be telling them is that it is, you know, freedom is not something that is given to people and it's not something that occurs naturally. You don't discover freedom like you discover the uh, Ayers Rock or, uh, you know, the Grand Canyon. You have to invent it and reinvent it again and again. And what that means is that you know, people today, we have so much wealth, we have so much education, we have so much technology to make beautiful, wonderful worlds. Mm. And we need to fight against the people who are saying, no, you can't have free speech anymore, no, you can't have free movement, you can't have a free economy. We have to push that back and then we have to run as many as experiments in living, as John mm. Stuart Mill would call them, mm. and keep seeing what works and what doesn't and keep pushing. But we need to, you, you the. Freedom comes from a fight, not from waiting for it to happen. Yeah. Well, Nick Gillespie, thank you so much for Thanks. your time. Go well today, and I know yeah. you will.